Hello everyone, my name is Stanley St. Rose, and today we're going to be talking about The Other Two, written by Edith Wharton. Now, before I go into summary analysis of this work, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment so that the channel can continue to grow. This work is very interesting. I think it says a lot about uh, romance, um, the way in which um, the things that women have to deal with when it comes to relationships uh, and, and the stigma that comes with having multiple partners throughout your lifetime, especially when you've been married uh, a lot as a woman. Um, so it's a very interesting story, and I think even though it was written uh, within the 20th century, I think it still says a lot about our lives today in the 21st century uh, and what um, couples go through um, today. Um, so it's a very, it's a very, um, um, significant story and I, I think it's, it's quite interesting. So I'm going to go into this, the summary and really give you, give you guys a close look, uh, or detailed summary on what happens, uh, within this work. And then, uh, I'll analyze it and kind of give you guys, um, or talk about a, a few certain things that I think that are really important, uh, within this short story. So, basically, we get introduced to Wayforn. Uh, Wayforn is this man that uh, he has a lot of money, he's past his mid-30s, um, and he's kind of like this financial consultant. Uh, he has good money, he has a really nice home, he has servants, um, he's saved up, he's really built himself in the world, which, you know, in... in one thing I, I, I've recognized about society is that for men, men usually get married later in life and women tend to get married younger. Um, there's a lot of men, even in the 21st century today, they'll get married in their early 30s and their mid 30s. Um, but for women, they'll marry in their uh, mid 20s or late 20s. Because, I mean, women, you, you're, you're kind of... Um, I, even though in the 21st century, um, the goalpost is being moved, but for women, it's always better to have children younger because the older you get, the harder it is to have children and to have a family because um, although nowadays, you, were, you know, you, it is possible uh, for a woman to even have a child at 50. I mean, there are documented cases of that happening. But it, it just gets significantly harder for women to have children the older they get. Um, and, and, you know, you're, you're eventually going to reach a point where you can't have kids. So a lot of women, it's, it's usually you get married young. Um, preferably, you're getting married in your 20s. Um, so right from the get-go, we're told that way foreign, this is like, you know, he's getting married for the first time, but his wife is not. Uh, his wife... Wayphone's wife has, you know, she's had a few husbands. Um, she's had two husbands. Uh, and there's there's a stigma, especially that, you know, this work is being written um, in the 20th century. This is a woman who is uh, of high social status. Um, and she has this stigma around her because she's had two marriages, two divorces. And now she's married Wayphone, uh, which is, you know, he's... He's her third husband. So, um, you know, there's a lot of talk, a lot of gossip, a lot of rumors going around. A lot of people um, are saying that, you know, Wayforn uh, made a horrible decision or that he doesn't know what he's doing. Um, and also that, you know, she might be a bad apple when it comes to marriage and relationships. Um, and so, you know, right from the get-go... Uh, this short story by Edith Wharton, it's presenting an idea that was frowned upon. It was um, showing or depicting uh, a marriage to us that most people look down upon and, and that, um, you know, people within the, the, the upper tiers of society didn't accept. Uh, but, but Alice Wayforn here, she just knows how to adapt um, to the things that happen in her life and to, the, and to how society functions to the point where um, she maneuvers it enough um, to have people like her, to have people on her side, and to make her third marriage somewhat acceptable within her, um, within the upper tiers of New York uh, within the 20th century. So, 
Um, it's it's very significant. It really it really um, says a lot about that time and, and also the time that we live in today. Because even though it might not seem like it, um, the voices within um, the twenty first century uh, are still frowned upon. I mean, if anybody comes to you today in twenty twenty one and says they've been married five times or they have five divorces, you're going to judge them. You're just going to outright judge them because you're going to say like, well, <laughs> you've been married five, six times. I mean, that, that kind of, that's a red flag right there. I mean, if there was ever a red flag, that's a red flag. Um, so divorces are always, even today, are always going to be something we, we, we look at closely, we want to question, and, and also it says a lot about the person's character and reputation because it can get quite ugly. It can get quite ugly. Um, so so we, you know, um, Edith Wharton, one thing I love about her works is that they're very complex. There's a lot going on. I mean, just the whole idea of marriage and divorces alone um, she just really presents this to us right from the get-go of the work, and, and there's a lot to unpack right there, but we're not going to spend forever on it. So we're told that Wei Forn, he's married to um, to Alice. Um, she This is her third marriage. The marriage is, quite, is going quite well. They have money. They have a nice home. He's well-established. Uh, and so, you know, they're part of the, the, the 1% of New York at the time. So they have the money, they have the prestige, they have the social status, um, and everything's wonderful. Um, so um, what happens next is that we learn that uh, their honeymoon was cut short, Alice and, and Wayforn's honeymoon, it was cut short because Lily, um, Alice's daughter from her first marriage, is sick and they have to come home for you know to take care of her so Alice is taking care of Lily and you know from the beginning of the short story we kind of see uh, way for and kind of wait you know he's waiting for his wife to come and join him so they can have so they can eat together and be together and spend time together and he's you know giddy like a schoolboy because he wants to spend time with his with his beautiful a uh, lovely wife, rosy wife that, you know, that any man would want because she's just so beautiful and attractive and just, you know, something, so, you know, arm candy, as they say. So the story goes on and we we are, were introduced to another character uh, by the name of Haskett. Haskett is Lily's um, father, um, you know, Alice's first husband. So Haskett is... It's quite important because he has a tie. He well, he has an an, an eternal tie to Alice because they have a child together, and we learned that Haskett has given a lot for Lily because he really loves um, his daughter. Um, Haskett and and Alice they got divorced. Um, well, one reason why one reason that we we were we are given that. Um, Haskett and, and Alice got divorced was that um, he wasn't making enough money. He didn't have enough money. Um, and when Wayforn is introduced uh, to Haskett, the way that Alice described him and, and what he saw, they weren't the same thing. Because in, in, Wayforn's, in Wayforn's mind, Alice told him that Haskett was this brute and in real life, he's not at all. He's not a brute at all. He's a very, um, you know, over the over the top, um, you know, well mannered, polite man. And Alice pretty much said that he was a brute, and he's not a brute. He's not a brute at all. So Haskett comes into the picture, and he's actually he's moved closer. Uh, to the to the waveforms because he wants to see his daughter when Lily is perfectly healthy he usually she usually goes to see Haskett uh, to see her father uh, but since Lily is si is sick now he's actually he pays the waveforms a visit now this is quite uncomfortable because um, waveform he in his mind he's thinking about you know this perfect home right he's he's the man of the house. He's the breadwinner, he does all of the work, he has this arm candy, he has this beautiful wife and Alice, and Lily is just a child that, you know, that, that's in his care. 
Um, he wasn't really thinking that much about Haskett, but when Haskett comes into the picture, it really, um, it really just just puts a chink in his world, a chink in his armor, because this just shows you that there's a piece of Alice that's not all his, right? Because at some point, Alice and Haskett they were happily married, and they and they even have the, you know a fruit of their marriage. Is Lily so? This kind of bothers Wayforn to the point where, when Haskett is coming to the house, he he pretty much spends more time at work, and he's actually happy because he actually gets more work uh, to do, and he gets to to stay at work at work later when Haskett comes to visit his daughter. So that's happening. It's uncomfortable. It's not um, it's not a pleasant thing. And, when, and that kind of makes me think a lot about the 21st century and how people talk about, um, you know, baby daddies and baby mamas and, and how they'll have a boyfriend or a husband and, you know, they'll have the baby daddy coming over and everybody will be... I mean, it just shows you how much time has changed because in families today, you're going to find a baby daddy or baby mama sitting right next to a husband or a boyfriend and exes and fathers and mothers and side girlfriends and i mean society has completely changed because relationships are just they're like onions now and they're intertwined because parenting is not just between mothers and fathers anymore it's between a community of people and a community of of present relationships and past relationships um, so I think this work by Edith Wharton it just stands the test of time because it's it's showing us an instance of modern relationships in the past, which I just find that it gives me goosebumps because it shows you how you know fundamental certain human behaviors are. So I mean I could definitely see how a baby daddy and a, and a husband um, you know might not get along and. You know, in this short story, we get in, in the, a precise example of how uh, Waythorn and Haskett, they don't hate each other. They're not at each other's throats, but they're not really so comfortable around each other because they know that they're both, they both have been or, or are married or have been married to this one woman. And they both mean something to this woman. Uh... Haskett is the baby daddy and, and, and Wayforn is the current husband. So it from my perspective it can get quite messy or it is it is already really messy. Um so the story goes on and you know Wayforn adapts, Alice she knows how to adapt already, um and Haskett adapts and, and Lily gets to see uh her father and, and she gets to see um, uh, her mother and, and Wayforn, you know, he's just adapting. Now, what makes matters worse is that Haskett is not Alice's, um, Alice's only ex-husband. She has, um, another husband by the name of Varric and, and Varric is, is a, is a richer man, a, a more, uh, is a wealthy man. And the way that Wayforn meets him is through business. Uh, since, uh, Wayforn is kind of like this, um, a financial advisor, um, he actually gets more work to do because one of his colleagues um, is sick, so he ends up with more work, and um, Varric is one of these accounts that he gets, uh, and now he has to work face-to-face. -face. Now, now Wayforn has to work face-to-face -face with one of his wife's um, ex-husbands, and when they meet, I mean, they meet once in public, uh, and, and now they, it's not just meeting in restaurant or, or in public or in fancy balls, because they do, they do meet, and, because these are rich people, okay, these, this is not, um, um, yeah, Waythorn and, and his, and, and his wife, and Varric, they're very rich and wealthy people, they're, they're on the up and up of society, um, and Haskett is not rich. He's not that wealthy. He's he has a job. I mean, he's doing well for himself. He, he's making ends meet. He's probably making better than ends meet. 
uh, but he's just not as wealthy as as Wayforn and 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 Varric. Um, so when you see in the short story, you do see like Varric and 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 Wayforn and Alice. They're at you know fancy balls and rest and fancy restaurants, and they're in high, they're they visit high end places because they're part of that one percent. Um, and and basically now the story gets extre- like extremely messy because. You have Haskett, you have um, Varric joining the party, and you have Waythorn. All these men uh, have been romantically involved with with Alice. Um, They all have been her husband at some point. And each of them now hold our our piece of Waythorn's life, um, or Alice's life, because... Of course, again, Haskett is the baby daddy. Varys now has, you know, is a cu- is a client or a customer, a client. Let's say client, a client of Waythorn because now he's Waythorn is managing, um, you know, his account. Oh my god, it's just it gets really. Oh my god, um, this short story is just very. Um, awkward because you, you have Varric and, and Wayforn working together due to financial reason financial reasons and and Wayforn's managing um, Varric's account accounts because you know he's come into a lot of money and this is actually very fascinating because we get a little tidbit of information that one of the reasons why Varric and Alice divorced was that. Um, it, it, some of it had to do with money, and Varric came into a lot of money after the divorce, and now Varric has the money, uh, and but he's already divorced to Alice, and now Alice is with Wayforn because in in in, in some of it has to do with the fact that uh, Wayforn has money. So all these these three. Um, Former lovers and lovers are in all now present in Alice's in Alice's life, and Waythorn is very uncomfortable uh, because he's now realizing that his wife is not one hundred percent his. Um, there's this little thing that happens where um, Alice uh, and Waythorn they're they're having coffee or um, they're together, and Alice is kind of like. Um, giving him a drink, uh, his coffee, and he and she pours um, cognac, I think it was, into his drink, and he kind of like, he's shocked by this, because he saw Varric pour, pouring cognac into his coffee, um, and so he thinks to himself, well, does that mean she used to do this for um, Varric, and now she's just mindlessly doing it for me, thinking I'm Varric. And that's something you got to think about and something that, that just shakes me and, and should shake you because Alice has been married three times and she probably has told three men that, you know, I love you, right? She's told three men that I've loved you or I love you. And and, and if we can even take that to a, a further step, She's been in matrimony and, and taken vows and probably walked down uh, the church aisle with three men and, you know, declared in front of God that, you know, these this man is my husband. Three times with three different men, she said, this is my husband. And, and the thing is, like, marriage within the 20th century and, and, it, and even until today... Marriage is not something that's taken lightly, especially within the t- the time period that this work is, was being written in, because w- when you get married, right, for most people, when you get married, uh, if you're going down to City Hall to to get married, that's, that's still significant and important, that's still marriage, but for most people, you get all your family members together, all your co-workers, you know, for modern day, 
you know, in the modern day, you're getting all your coworkers, all your family members, all your friends, all your acquaintances, people you've probably never talked to. You're getting them all into this one room. You're getting social media fired up and you're, you're declaring to your community, your, your professional community, to your family, to all your loved ones, to all your acquaintances and, and all the people that you probably don't even know on social media that you are declaring when you get married, you are declaring that you have chosen another human being to be your partner for, for life, for, for eternity as the, for eternity in the human sense, because in the human sense, if we believe, if you believe that this is the only life that you get, um, or that your life on earth, the, the 80 years, the 90 years you get on earth, the, the 100 years you get, on, you get on earth is the only life that you get. If you truly believe in that, then that means the entirety, the eternity of what the human life can offer. Um, you are saying that you're going to spend all of that time with one person and that person is yours and you are, are, are you know, you belong to that person, that person belongs to you. You, you are now one one flesh, one being, one person. And for Alice to have done that three times, it's a lot of weight. It's a lot of weight. And it even makes you question her character um, and her being because, I mean, it, it's just, it, it's really heavy. And especially for these men, I mean, they have have loved her or have been in love with her or I, I don't it's hard to think about how you can be in love with someone to the point of matrimony and then one day to just say that you feel nothing you know that that is something that's um it's very significant and heavy and it's quite significant because it holds a lot of weight to it. It just holds a lot of weight to, to a lot of weight to it. So, in the the way foreign household now, you have you have a very heavy dilemma because um, Haskett is is coming in to see his daughter, um, you know, on and on again. Um, way foreign is there. Alice is there, and at the end of the story. Um, you know, we know that um, Varric and, and Wayforn are working together. Um, at the end of the story, we see Varric show up to Wayforn's house, uh, and Haskett shows up. You know, Haskett shows up before him. It's very awkward, but Wayforn, you know, offers him a, a, a cigar or a cigarette, something like that. Uh, and then um, Varric shows up, and you know, well, Wayforn offers him a cigar. Um, and the three of these men, they're all in Wayforn's house, and, you know, Alice comes in, and apparently she went to have tea with Wayforn, but now she recognizes that all three of these men are now present in her home. And so, pretty much, they, you know, Alice and her three husbands, two ex and one present, um... They all sit down together and have tea, and that's how the the story ends. And so, it ends in a in quite of a it it. Well, I guess you really can't say mess because they all recognize where they they're where they are, but it's something that's very hard to maneuver because if we think about this. You have a baby daddy at this tea, because this is how the short story ends. You have a baby daddy, you have um, a client of Wei Foreign who also is his wife's ex-husband. You have Wei Foreign who's the current husband. All of these three men have been in love with the same woman. All of these three men have been married to the same woman. One of these men have a child with the woman. And at a certain point, she loved all of them. And it's it, it's quite awkward and messy. But the thing is, like, because of social etiquette, because of the, the norms of that time, they all have to behave and they all have to keep face because that's what the time called for. Um, 
and and the story just ends with them because now they, they there's nothing you can do about it. Haskins not going away because he wants to be with his daughter. Um, Wayforn's in in love with with Alice. Alice likes the good life and the wealthy life and the social status and um, the social etiquette. Um, and Varric is just there so he can you know have his money managed because he's poor at managing his own money. So he needs um, Wayforn um, to help him manage his money. So their lives are all intertwined. They each have a reason to for being at the Wayforn household. They all have a reason for being in each other's lives. Um, and and there's there's a level of of closeness I can even add because these three men at at a certain point in their lives they've they've all felt this deep love or at least deep lust for this one woman. And she the same for them. So, I mean, it's kind of like a powder keg. These four people, because, I mean, I, I imagine the modern person sitting in a room with, like, a, a, modern, a modern woman sitting in a room with her current boyfriend and her baby daddy and, I don't know, her ex who's also her business partner. I mean, it, that's going to be a very charged room. And there are some topics, I guess, we just... You wouldn't talk about in that room. Um, but I guess that phenomenon is just not really that special. Because here we have a story that was published in the early 20th century. Kind of giving us the same idea. the same, The same thing. So... Yeah, that's 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 the story. So let's go into the the analysis and some deeper meanings. Um, the first thing I'll say about this work is that there is one line that I found that I found to be very disgusting and very just just very horrific is where um, uh, where Wayforn kind of says that um, she he compares Alice to a shoe. Or an elastic that's been worn out, or an elastic that has gone in different directions. Um, and when you compare your wife to the shoe that many men have worn, that's just so. That's to me, that's just nasty. Um, look, uh, you gotta grow up. Um, no one in this world is just sitting and waiting for one person. Um, way foreign. He compares his wife to a shoe as if he was perfect he, and he was never with anybody else his entire life. I mean, Wayforn is, is past 35. He's, he's closer to his 40s. Um, I would imagine that Alice was, wasn't the first girl that he's ever been with. Um, so if he's calling her a shoe that many men have worn, um, I guess he can be considered as a shoe. Um, as well, um, he goes. He even goes on to say, and the thing is, like, I guess even if you take that a little further, and, we, and you think about, you know, she's been married with all of these three men, and she's slept with all of these three men, and, and there's this idea of 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 a value decreasing in a person um, that's tied to how many sexual partners they've had. And that, that is very prevalent within society today. And, that, and, and that's one thing I think that, that Wayforn um, pushes the, reader, the reader's attention to. Because he's kind of saying she's been with, uh, uh, you know, at least three men at this point. She's married all of them. So she's, she's slept with all of them. And she's had a daughter with one of them. So, you know... In, in in a way, he's he's calling her that word. We know he's calling her, right? So he's kind of like, you know, calling his his wife uh, used, and and he's seeing her as an object. So that 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 line that that quote where he talks about she's a shoe that's had many uh, um, users. Um, and she's an elastic that's gone and that's been stretched out in different directions. Uh, he even goes on to say that she's had three names, right? She's, you know, she started off with Haskett, then, then Varric, and then now Wayforn. And he even goes to say that 
with every marriage or in every name, she's left a piece of her privacy, a piece of her identity, a piece of herself, which is all true. Because she can never untie herself from Haskett because they have a child, they have a, a they, they made a being, a creature together. So Alice can never truly untie herself from from Haskett. Um, she can never truly untie herself from Varys, Varric because, I mean, um, think about this. This is all of, of, a lot of the literature from the 20th century, a lot of it comes, um, a lot of it have religious uh, um, surfaces underneath, right? Because um, Wayforn even says that, um, she's left a piece of her inner self to these men, to each of these men. And that, that even, even mentions like, um, the inner, the innermost place of a being of a person, um, which kind of makes you think about God and religion. And that, that's kind of, that's very significant because, um, from the Christian perspective or from the Christian religion, when a, a man marries a woman and they be in, you know, matrimony, all that kind of stuff, they become one flesh, they become one being. And for most people, you can never separate that. Even if you get divorced, even if you get someone new, once you've, you know, declared in front of God, you're married and you, you, you know, you go through that, you know, you, that um, consummation and uh, matrimony and all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you declare in front of the church, in front of God, in front of all these people, there's this idea that, and within Christianity, there's this idea that you are one being, and you can't just, you know, split apart one being after it's been put together. And so, it's kind of like Wayphone even says that, you know, she's unified herself to each of these men at some point in her life, and... Um, a piece of her have been left with them each time she gets married and gets divorced. Um, but he also says something, or or the, the work also kind of like makes you think about this idea that the more she's been married, the more husband she's had, the better wife she's become. Um, because at this point, Alice has been married twice and Wayforn is her third husband so she's kind of like perfected her skill of finding a good man or a good husband and sticking um with what she she learned to to make a relationship work now the thing is like um alice has been in control because it seems as if she's the one that pretty much brings about these divorces she's the one that files for these divorces uh because it, it kind of seems that or if one kind of puts it together that um, Alice left Haskett because he didn't have any enough money, um, and and to a certain extent that was kind of like the reality that she had with with um, Varric because he can't manage his money by himself, um, and and their relationship just didn't work out. And, but but Wayforn is kind of like this this Goldilocks husband for Alice because. He knows how to manage his money. He has money. He is wealthy. He is part of the upper class, um, and he knows how to maintain his money. And that's the pro one of the biggest problems that Alice has always had with her husband is that it's either they're too poor or they don't know how to manage their money because Haskett doesn't know how to manage his money. V um, wow, Haskett doesn't have um, enough money. Varric doesn't know how to manage his money, but Wayforn knows how to balance it because he has just enough and he knows how to manage it. So she's been looking for the perfect husband or, or the Goldilocks husband. Well, unless she divorces him <laughs> one day and gets another one. Uh, but she's been looking for the perfect husband. Um, and and, and Wayforn, in some way, he's found the perfect wife because Alice has learned how to be a better wife each time she gets divorced because trial and error. I mean, the world kind of functions like that. You keep failing and failing and failing and failing until you get better. Um, if you're a human being and you don't get used to failing to succeed, you're never going to learn anything because all life is is a, is a series of failures and then ultimately you succeed. Um, that's, that's why... 
when you truly succeed, you're bouncing off the walls and you're celebrating because that, you know, succeeding means a lot and it's worth something because you know how much you probably worked for it and failed to get where you are. Um, everyone fails. Fa failing is just the central part of life. If you, if you never fail at all um, in life and everything is just given to you and everything is just spoon fed to you. Life might not have any meaning because, you know, a lot of the meaning that comes out of having things in life is, is the struggle to get them and to know how much they're worth. If you're born rich and you're, you're a child and you're born a billionaire, you know, you know, buying a brand new iPhone or a brand new car is nothing to you but if you're a person who comes from poverty you never had anything good buying a brand new car for the first time might seem like climbing Mount Everest to you um, so a lot of the meaning in life is, is from failures and trial and error and, and working towards success so that's that's you know that's one thing when it comes to deeper meaning analysis that I get from this work is that yes, Wei Foreign kind of kind of like judges his his wife kind of saying that she's she you know she's sleeping around with men or she's been around a town she's been used like a shoe, um, you know she's like an elastic that's been worn out and she's left pieces of her soul or pieces of her being to to one two three men or you know and he's including himself. Um, you know, and, and also that through a lot of trial and error of failed marriages, she's been perfected to be a better wife. That's all being implied within this work. Um, another thing that's being implied here is, is pretty much, um, you know, what marriage represents. Um, because the thing is, nowadays in the 21st century, reputation... I would say it's not, well, no, reputation is still very important. Your name is very important. What you do with your name is very important. If you're a person and you're in, in having a lot of relationships and um, going around town, having a lot of partners, if that's your reputation, it sticks with you, um, especially with women. When women have a lot of partners, people judge you, people look down upon you, people look at you less than human. And again, I'm telling you, there's a lot of Christian ideas and principles that are presented within this work. Um, when women sleep or have a lot of divorces or have been with a lot of men, society tries to bring them down. Um, Alice within this work, she really tries, she really maneuvers o um, over all of that and tries to keep her name afloat. Um, and it's because she can adapt, it's, it's because she can control her temper. Um, you know, this woman just knows how to control her temper. Um, even when she figures figures out that her child is sick, she just automatically um, she takes a quick moment to to register the information, and then she just bounces back, and and she maintains her composure and and you know maintains that social etiquette. Um, so for women, for men. Um, sleeping around or having a lot of wives, it's it's not looked down upon. It's never been looked down upon in society because, you know, men have always been used as conquerors. And, you know, you go out and you conquer as much as you can, conquer as much women as you can and, and leave your mark. Um, I mean, there's some cultures where, I mean, this is used all around the world. And, and this is really... It get, can get quite ugly because in, in many circles, women are, are looked at as being the field or the soil or the land and men are the seed. So, you know, your plant men are planting and, and, you know, they're growing plants and the women bear the plants and because they're the field and the, the men are the seed. And... Um, the, the field or the, the, the soil, it always gets blamed for, you know, having more than one um, 
seed. Yeah, um, it, it gets it gets very bad. It gets very bad the way that Wayforn judges his wife and 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 sees that because like he really he ends up coming down to this conclusion that he can't have his wife to himself and that he has to share her with two other men. Um, and you know more or less that's how society works nowadays is that. If a woman has a child with another being, another uh, person, another man, and she has a boyfriend or husband, she kind of has to share herself with two with these men because, on one hand, she has to co-parent a child with her baby daddy, and they have to get along and have a relationship on, on in, in some ways so that the child doesn't blow up, all right? Because a woman with a baby daddy, she she has to work closely with him, um, and they can't be at each other's throats twenty four seven because that's that's going to lead, um, that's going to to be extremely horrible for the child, right? Um, and then she also has her husband that she needs to pay attention to and and be to him as he is to her. Um, so again, that that's very messy. That's very messy, um, but but this work and, and, and overall, right? This work, from my perspective, I think it really it shows you the plight of women in relationships and sex and dating and and, and marriage, uh, the weight that marriage holds for a lot of cultures. Because I'm, I guarantee you, you have more. If if a person in their thirties have two divorces, people look down on you. Um, Divorce numbers, the number of divorces in your life, depending on, on how old you are, determine on how people judge you. If you're 50 years old and you've been divorced two times, some people won't look down on you. You'll probably find certain people that will still look down on you. But if you're 50 years old and you've been divorced two times, most people won't care in the 21st century, um, in 2021. But if you're 50 years old and you've been married six times, everybody's going to judge you because they're like, what's wrong with you? Right, even three divorces. I think the acceptable number today in the twenty first century. I think the acceptable number, like people won't tell you out loud, but I feel like the acceptable number of divorces is two, if any. Uh, if you go to three or above, I think people are really gonna have some questions for you. It's it's gonna be like, well, well, first and foremost, they're gonna go towards the excuses, um, or not excuses, but reasons, right? Was it, you know, was one marriage abusive? Was there, did something go on? Did a husband die? Did something, uh, you know, it's never, once you've gone to three marriages, it, there, are always, there are always going to be the questions of, did something go wrong of some sort? Or did you just decide you didn't love the person anymore? Because, I mean, it, it kind of, it's a, it's a very significant thing to, say, I, I'll love you forever three times and then get divorced three times. Um, people might start pointing fingers at you because, again, no matter what culture you're part of, matrimony is a very serious and significant thing because you're bringing your entire world into it and you're declaring something to the world. Um, to declare something to the world three times and, you know, destroy it three times it, it says a, it, it can say a lot about uh your character and who you are as a person um so another thing i would like to say and the last thing i would like to say is that there's also this gender imbalance here within this work you can definitely see who holds the power um waythorn haskett and, and varick they all hold the power uh because we can see that alice you know she married them uh and and married and got divorced several times mostly i would say for for money um and i'm not trying to say she's a gold digger I, i'm just i'm trying to say that within the 21st century if you're a beautiful woman the best way for you to be wealthy and the best way for you the most the easiest way for you to be wealthy and and to live a good life is probably to, to marry someone rich and Alice, I think she she's from a, a 
you know, the 1%, she did not want to fall down to nothing or to, to the unknown or to, to, to being a regular person. So in order for her to stay in the 1%, she has to marry or always stay with a husband that has money so that she doesn't lose the, the, the comfortable things in life. Because again, she's not going to go and work. I mean, especially in the 20th, 20th century, the early, the early 20th century, most upper class women were not looking forward to working, okay? They were looking forward to um, marrying rich, living uh, a wonderful life, you know, going to Europe, going on expensive vacations, going to fancy balls. Their idea was not working. Um, it was marrying rich. That was the, the big investment that you could make to live a happy and, and wealthy life. Um, so women today in the 21st century, they're not really restricted by that. I mean, you can be as rich as you want um, and be as, be as independent as you want, um, which I guess this is a, a matter for another day, but I guess independent, rich uh, women, um, independent, successful women, that brings about a set of problems um, on its own because right now what I'm seeing in society is that now you're getting a conflict between who is the true breadwinner and can two breadwinners exist? Can can two breadwinners coexist? Because in society, all of, from from since the beginning of time, the breadwinner was the person or the individual who decided what the family unit did and now within the 21st century now when you have two breadwinners in the household it's going to lead to more conflict because you know in a house when you have two purses and two people who control two different sets of purse strings decisions you know Sometimes it's going to be hard for them to, to, to become, to find a compromise. So, so yeah. Um, so, that's everything. That's my perspective. That's my analysis, my summary of this work by Edith Wharton. Um, there's always more to the story. Um, there's always more to the story. I mean, Edith Wharton, these works are extremely complex. Um, and there's always more to add to them. But um, for the sake of not going on forever, we're going to end it here. Um, I hope you guys got the general idea of what happened in the story and what's significant about it. Uh, please remember to leave a like, subscribe, and or comment, and I'll see you guys in my next video.